Please join in the invitation together. O oh, give thanks for goodness and love endure forever. This is the day that our God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Today, with branches of palm and shouts of Hosanna, we enter into the presence of your spirit, and we are glad, O oh God. We see your presence in the faces of those with whom we gather. We hear it in the clanging of bells, the sound of pipe organ, the beauty of voice, the rustle of fronds, the murmur of children. We feel it in the kinship we experience to those around us. Truly your spirit is with us in this place. Almighty and everlasting God, who of thy tender love towards humankind has sent thy son, our savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross that all mankind should follow the example of great humility. Mercifully, grant that we may both follow the example of his patience and also be made partakers of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit. Remind us that you go with us when we leave this place too. Remind us that outside these walls, we are the ones who came in the name of God. Remind us to bring goodness and be love for all we meet. Even as Jesus did, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to New England Congregational Church on this joyous Palm Sunday morning. It is good to be together with you today. A very special welcome to those who are guests with us. Please note your attendance in the friendship register before passing it to your neighbor. We're also pleased to welcome Betsy Santana, Advancement Director with Mutual Ground, who will share with us about their work a little bit later in the service. We hope you'll all join us in the narthex for coffee and conversation following the service. Please take a moment to read through the announcements in your bulletin. Of special note, this afternoon at 2.30 p.m., Chamber Music on the Fox presents Romantic Piano Quartets right here in New England Church Sanctuary. Tickets will be available at the door and you are encouraged to attend. On Thursday evening, we hope you'll consider joining us for our Maundy Thursday service of Tenebrae, a service of shadows. This beautiful service will feature a variety of special music, communion, readings, and the extinguishing of candles. Next Friday, our, sir, our chapel will be open from 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. for self-directed Good Friday communion and meditation. And next Sunday, we hope you'll join us for one of our Easter services at 8.30 a.m. in the chapel and at 10 o'clock here in the sanctuary. Both services will feature special music and our 10 a.m. service will feature our choirs, brass quartet, children's time, and pipe organ. This is a great opportunity to invite friends, neighbors, and family to join you for services. And now remember that no matter who you are, 
or where you are on your journey of faith and life, you are very welcome in this place. As our joy ringers prepare for their anthem, we invite you to greet your neighbors. Our children are invited forward for children's time. the saddest good morning I've heard in a while. Are you guys asleep? Yes. yes. Oh my goodness. Well, let's try to wake one another up and try that good morning one more time. 
Good morning. Good morning. All right. Good to see you all. What do you have in your hands today? Palm branches. And what are we supposed to do with these pesky things? Wave them? When are we supposed to wave them? Yeah? Um, Easter. I heard someone say something over here. D did you have a suggestion about when to wave these? Uh, yes? Easter. Maybe when we hear the word Jesus. I like that idea. Should we try that? Easter. But it's not just you guys waving, right? It's all of these guys waving too, right? Yes. Okay, so let's try it. Jesus. Hey, look at that. That is fun. That is fun. Well, Easter is next Sunday, and it's okay. You can just hold it a little higher. Um, so today I want to share with you the story of Palm Sunday. These are real. That's right. If you don't put it in water when you get home, it's going to dry out and be all crunchy, and then you know what we're going to do with them? We're going to burn them for, mon uh, for Ash Wednesday next Is year. That You're right. We put crosses on our foreheads on Ash Wednesday, and those ashes come from these palms. You could maybe do that. You can burn one, one and then... That's possible, definitely. So Jesus traveled. Oh, see, I caught you unaware. I didn't, I, I told you that way immediately. Let's try it again. So Jesus traveled to small cities and big towns to teach people about God's love. One of the most important trips was to Jerusalem, the special holy city. While he was there, Jesus... Gave the disciples a special task. He said to them, go to a village. There you will find a young donkey that no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it to me. I want to ride it to Jerusalem. The disciples were surprised, but they wanted Jesus to have a donkey to ride because he always walked everywhere he went. They loved Jesus. And they knew it was important. So they did what he asked. Jesus told them, good. If anyone asked why they were taking the donkey, they should tell him that he needed it. They went into the village and found the donkey just as Jesus had told them. They brought the donkey back to him. The disciples laid cloths on his back so that Jesus could ride it. Now Jesus was ready to ride into Jerusalem. The people following him began to cheer. Crowds lined the street. Some people joined the disciples and spread their cloaks and branches of palm into the road to welcome Jesus. Others wondered why everybody was so excited about entering a man, a man entering the city on a donkey. Powerful rulers, they knew, rode big horses. The disciples praised Jesus singing and shouting for joy because of God's love for them. The people welcomed him with blessings, saying peace. The people who knew Jesus and knew about his teachings of love and peace were excited that he was in Jerusalem. Have you ever been really excited when one of your very favorite people came to visit you? Yes? What was your favorite person that came to visit you? <coughs> Grandparents? Mm-hmm. Last summer, our Uncle Danny came to Florida to visit us, and then the week after, our Uncle Jeff came to visit us from the other side of the world. All right, Uncle Danny and Uncle Jeff. Yeah. Did you have a favorite person that you were excited to see? Yeah. Your cousins. Nice. Yep. Betty and Stella. Buddy? Stella? No. Betty. Betty, Stella. Betty. Oh. That's cool. Yes. Family and friends. Family and friends. Anyone else? 
Okay, when they get, when you're excited for a family friend or a favorite auntie or a special celebrity, how do you feel when you have to wait and wait and wait for them to finally get there? Bored. Bored, hungry, did an, annoyed. Bored, bored, and bored. Bored, bored, and more bored. Actually, um, me and my girlfriend actually decided to come not play in it, and when they were the girls at so you spend time playing and then you get excited when you hear Not the doorbell. Patient. Not patient. The crowds in our story were so excited for Jesus when he finally came to town. He was a little bit famous by then and they had high hopes that he, his visit was going to bring new <coughs> hope and new possibility for their people. It's good to be excited to see our favorite people. It was good for the crowd to be excited to see Jesus. <laughs> I bet it makes them feel good to know how happy we are to see them. Everyone likes to be celebrated a little bit, don't they? That's right. So this week, don't forget to celebrate a little bit as we wait for something very special next Sunday on Easter. Let's share a prayer together. God, remind us that it's important to celebrate. Remind us that it's especially important to celebrate the special people in our lives, all the people in our lives, because they're all special. Amen. You guys can head to Kid Zone and youth can head to youth group. Thank you for being here. Don't poke anyone with your palm branch.
we prepare for our time of prayer, we remember all those affected by the terrorist attack in Moscow on Friday, those many affected by ongoing violence in Ukraine and Gaza and around the world. Let us be together now in a time of prayer. Hail and Hosanna. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God. Today, it feels that way, doesn't it? Blessed, the crowds adoring, the city welcoming, even the path made soft by palms and cloaks. Jesus was coming. Anything was possible. Until, perhaps, we realize that he's after peace and not power, that heaven's realm is more about possibility and promise than it is about practicality and proof, that he's more interested in unity than conformity, more interested in outsiders than insiders, more interested in rooting out the evil powers of empire than simply putting them in someone else's hands, even his own. On Palm Sunday, when Jesus fits our agenda, it's a good day. But what about tomorrow, and Maundy Thursday, and Good Friday? Will we still be shouting hail and hosanna when we realize that his plans for the world are so dramatically different than our plans for him? God, may the joy of this day see us through the shadows of the week ahead. When we face Jesus' true intentions, may we find ourselves standing with him on the side of the poor and the oppressed, the marginalized, and the victims of violence. And when we come face to face with humanity's true aims, may compassion fill our eyes. Love ignite our hearts, and determination drive our bodies as we follow in Jesus' footsteps. Amen. My name is Betsy Santana. I'm the Advancement Director at Mutual Ground, and thank you all for having me here today. I'm honored to be here speaking on behalf of Mutual Ground. Um, Mutual Ground has been transforming lives for over 47 years. Our goal is to empower our clients with the education and the, the support they need to make informed ch choices to end the cycles of violence and substance use. I like to start with stats whenever I go out and speak in the community. One in three women and one in four men will experience some form of physical violence by an intimate partner in their lifetime. Nearly 20 people per minute experience physical abuse in the United States. Every 68 seconds, an American is sexually assaulted. And although it can happen to anyone, one in six women have been a victim of an attempted or completed rape. 15% of adults in the US struggle with a substance use disorder which in many cases started as a way for them to overcome trauma. This equates to more than 39 million individuals affected, with only about 10% of them receiving services. With statistics like these, it's very likely that someone you know is silently struggling with domestic violence, sexual violence, or substance use. At Mutual Ground, we're open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Our domestic and sexual violence services often begin with a phone call to one of our two 24-hour hotlines, where victims and their friends and families are provided with immediate telephone counseling, assistance, or resources. When individuals and families need a safe living space, our residential services team collaborates with other departments to provide crisis intervention, including counseling, case management, emergency shelter, 
We support over 200 individuals in our emergency shelter with, I'm sorry, 400 individuals in our emergency shelter with 200 of those being children. Currently, we're at capacity with 32 individuals and 14 children. When individual, or our counseling team provides individual, family, and group counseling to support victims of any age to help them heal from the effects of trauma and explore various ways of coping and reclaiming their personal power. We impact over 1,500 individuals annually through our counseling services, with over 400 of those being children. Our family services team aims to help end the cycle of violence by bolstering the unique strength of each of those children, providing them with a safe space to process their trauma and empowering their families to heal. In area hospitals, our medical advocacy team responds to over 100 emergency room calls every year when a victim of domestic or sexual violence is admitted, offering immediate emotional support, education, and assistance. To put that into perspective, we are visiting a hospital almost every other day. Within the Canaan Kennel Courthouses, our legal advocates help victims navigate the legal system and assist in filing in approximately 300 orders of protection each year. Our domestic and sexual violence prevention education team delivers over 2,500 presentations within Kane and Kendall counties, visiting local middle, I'm sorry, elementary, middle, and high schools, and impacting over 60,000 students. Our program is designed to educate, inform, and empower students, teaching students how to recognize, refuse, and report different types of abuse using age-appropriate language. In our outpatient substance use services, our support team provides adults, adolescents, and families, allowing them to heal from trauma that has led to their abuse, teaching them new ways to cope, and encouraging them to reclaim their personal power. We also have substance use prevention team that goes on to, into the schools, working with local schools and organizations to spread awareness of the dangers of alcohol and substance use and prevent drug and alcohol use among adolescents, encouraging youth to make positive, healthy decisions for themselves. Mutual ground services are offered at no cost to the individuals impacted by domestic and sexual violence. We try to be good stewards of the support that we receive from our community, and it allows us to help to provide the comprehensive support that we offer for victims of violence and substance use. In-kind donations help further our mission and help us support our clients in many different ways. In addition to donations and financial contribution, Mutual Ground heavily relies and the support of over 200 volunteers annually, helping us provide direct services to clients, promoting our mission in the community, supporting our special events, and raising awareness. Domestic violence, sexual violence, and substance use cross all genders, socioeconomic levels, sexual orientations. Mutual Ground is committed to being a safe and affirming place to all individuals. I have a letter here that was just recently sent by one of our somebody who contributed a financial donation to us, um, and she included this letter with her donation. About three and a half years ago, Mutual Ground presented a program at our granddaughter's grade school. The presentation was on sexual exploitation and abuse. Our granddaughter, then nine years old, came home from school that day and told her mother what was talked about at, at the, in the Mutual Ground presentation and that it was happening to her. Her parents took immediate action to make matters worse the person involved was a trusted, very close family friend. It seemed like an eternity before trial dates were scheduled, um, causing postponements of the process, often at the very last minute. And the individual has now been convicted of predatory sexual assault of a victim under 13 years old, a Class X felony, among other convictions. As more and more information came out about what the child and family were going through, both friends and families alike have come forward with their personal stories, some naming the same individual. Thank you, Mutual Ground, for your continued advocacy and help. Thank you.
Hear now a reading from the Gospel according to Mark, the 11th chapter. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it to me. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. And as they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks in the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Here ends the reading. Theologians have wrestled with some arguably bizarre questions over the centuries. Things like, how many angels dance on the head of a pin? Or, do hair and fingernails continue growing in heaven? Well, perhaps the latest head scratcher is what would Jesus drive? <laughs> would he choose public transportation or own a car? Would it be a stick shift or an automatic? A sports utility vehicle roomy enough for all 12 apostles, or an economy model, or as someone in first service suggested, a Volkswagen minibus. <laughs> One ecologically minded minister suggested that Jesus would choose an environmentally friendly vehicle, such as a Toyota Prius with its hybrid gasoline electric motor. Some would go further and say he would have to choose an EV, that would be better. But other theologians disagree. Some insist, in fact, that Jesus actually drove a Honda, but preferred not to discuss it. <laughs> As proof, they cite a verse in John's Gospel in which Jesus tells the crowd, For I did not speak of my own accord. Thank you for the laughter <laughs> and the tolerance. <laughs> Debate continues over whether his Honda had bumper stickers that said, my other car is a flaming chariot, honk if you love me, or this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased because he was an honor student at Galilee Elementary. <laughs> While these scholars make a good case for the Honda, I think we all know that Jesus really drove a donkey, as evidenced by our reading this morning from the Gospel according to Mark. I'm guessing that we can all agree that a donkey is not what you'd choose to drive if you wanted to be seen. There is, however, no doubt that Jesus had a reason for choosing to ride this particular creature into Jerusalem. We call Jesus' Palm Sunday entrance into Jerusalem the triumphal entry. In ancient Rome, a triumph was a military and religious observance that publicly celebrated and sanctified the achievements of a commander who had won a great victory for the empire. The triumph typically included a parade with captured enemies spoils of war, the commander in a chariot, and members of the armed services. The commander being honored was showered with flowers, and palm fronds could be waved to signify peace. 
In a way, Jesus' entry into Jerusalem mirrored a Roman triumph. Jesus was hailed as one who would defeat the Romans occupying his homeland and holding the people under the heel of the empire's boot. These singing, palm-bearing crowds believed that Jesus would bring victory and peace to their people. It may be a little difficult for us to know what this kind of joy and hope was like that filled the people at this time. Perhaps this entrance of Jesus evokes the kind of joy and relief that we can only imagine, for example, when United Nations troops arrive in a country torn apart by genocide, or when a convoy of trucks carrying grain arrives for starving people. The crowds on that long ago Sunday were filled to overflowing with excitement. So much so that Jesus said to silence them would have been to make the stones cry out in song. Unlike the Roman triumph, however, Jesus rode no war horse and certainly stood in no chariot. Peace does not ride on the back of a war horse. Instead, Jesus rode a donkey. Meanwhile, in another part of Jerusalem, at very nearly the same time, a second triumphal entry would have taken place, that of the Roman governor Pontius Pilate, who was coming to keep the peace during Passover, the celebration of Israel's freedom from enslavement under the ancient Egyptians. Pilate would certainly have been accompanied by soldiers. And he would have chosen another beast of burden to symbolize his power, force, and command. Pilate would have ridden a war horse. We have a war horse and a donkey. Two members of the same genus, two beasts of burden, two very different modes of transportation for Pilate and for Jesus, symbolizing two very different ways of being in the world. On the one hand, there is the war horse, filled with bitterness and fury, ready to gallop into battle. And on the other hand, there is the donkey, at times indignant, but an ancient symbol of peace. We see both the war horses and the peaceful donkeys in the world around us. In the ways governments respond with military might when pressed or threatened, rushing like a war horse headlong into battle rather than taking the donkey's approach of firmly but peacefully resisting the perceived evil. We see individuals gallop directly into the eye of the storm, into the center of a conflict, rather than approach it gently and with intention. In choosing the way of peace, the donkey, however, is not agreeing with or condoning an act that should not have happened or a state of being that simply should not be. It is, however, choosing a different response an intentional decision to acknowledge differences and work toward the possibility of real, lasting reconciliation. There are many examples that we could point to of those who have chosen the way of the donkey, the way of reconciliation, the way of peace. But I can think of none more poignant, none more profound, than the Amish community's response to the tragic shooting of nearly two decades ago that left five of their children and the gunman dead at a schoolhouse in Pennsylvania. Just hours later, members of the Amish community comforted the shooter's family and extended forgiveness to them. In a letter to the Amish community, the widow of the shooter wrote these words. Your love for our family has helped to provide the healing we so desperately need. Gifts you've given have touched our hearts in a way no words can describe. Your compassion has reached beyond our family, beyond our community, and is changing our world. And for this, we sincerely thank you. This is the way of reconciliation. 
the way of peace. If we're honest, I think we will all agree that it is difficult. Peace is difficult. It's kind of like choosing the high road when the low road just happens to follow a warm and sandy shoreline and some distant beach. And the high road is a particularly brutal winter on Lake Michigan. The way of peace, however, does not simply begin by responding in an unimaginably charitable way in the face of tremendous atrocity. Choosing the way of peace can begin by moving toward self-acceptance and a recognition of one's unique way of being in the world. Choosing the way of peace can begin with an overdue word of cooperation. Choosing the way of peace can begin with an honest handshake, a warm smile, a cup of hospitality, a gentle compromise, a fruitful conversation on a touchy subject, a heartfelt invitation. These two are the things that make for peace. And so this Palm Sunday, let us follow in the donkey's footsteps. Together may we be instruments of God's peace. Where there is hatred, let us so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. May we not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we awaken to eternal life. Amen.
This is the day that our God has made. And it continues when we leave this place. We dedicate our gifts and our very selves to embodying goodness, to bearing forth love and to championing peace in our community and in our world. Amen. Dear friends, blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God. Go forth and be that one. And may God go with you, above you to watch over you, before you to prepare the way, behind you to encourage you, beside you to befriend you, and within you to give you peace today and always. Amen.